What is going on, Ziani? How you doing? What's up? Step in my office. What was that? I said step in my office. What's up? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to my, my chambers here. And, you know, th there's only a few different types of girls on earth, but there's definitely, like, girls who will say, I'm taking a shit, and then girls who won't say that, and that was what you texted me right before. You're like, be, be right back. I, I'm taking a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I like to keep it real. Oh, I appreciate that. That, that was that's that that really endeared me to you beyond anything that we've been through together before in our previous conversations. Yeah, I just like to kick shit off on a level. It's fine. You flat yeah, out. I admire, I admire <laughs> that. Okay, so you are all of a sudden super super noteworthy um, on the internet for various reasons. But I mean, I was really taken aback when I watched uh, some of your music videos because I thought they were super fucking dope. Oh, thank you. What stood out? Um, dumping Hennessy on girls or like threatening to, I guess, was the main theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lion look, huh? That shit's gone really well. That was like self-funded, just DIY style with my two friends. And um, it was like kind of like the whole point of that video clip was to be like lighthearted and like not about any kind of like rap game fucking culture vibe it was supposed to be super anti-style but some people i guess thought it was cringy because they didn't get the joke you got the oh. joke okay you tell me though like how would you describe your music to people out there who maybe have learned about this controversy but maybe don't really have much of a perspective on like who you are or what what kind of thing you're trying to do out there it's just like fucking art right like what i'm finding right now at this moment um, I guess a few people have noticed that I have started being 100% authentic and really fucking real. And there's a mad power in that. So I feel like my shit's about to evolve into like another fucking level when it comes to like my rap shit. It's going to be less metaphorical, um, less indirect. Whereas I feel like my work in like the last year, almost two years, has been a little bit vague and yeah, using metaphor, and I think that now I've really gotten everything off my chest, and I don't have any, like, fear of being, like, yeah, uh, I was, like, I was holding back for a long time, artistically, on many levels. Okay, yeah, because there's always, yeah. I guess, uh, well, I want to ask this, what kind <laughs> of Die Antwoord fan were you coming up, like, you, were you somebody who they were, like, the band for you for a period of time? <sighs> Okay. So, because I could see the influence. I'm not super educated about them, but I could. I, I would assume that they were a pretty big influence. Yeah, in Australia, man, 2013, they were like the hot shit. They were like the edgy shit. You know, they were definitely fucked. edgy. My friends loved them. I loved them. Like they were like 2000 and fucking 12, 2013 Manson. You know what I mean? Mm, like that. Okay of pop culture in Australia. I don't think they were as big in the States. I don't think they've ever been as big in the States as they have been in other places. Like me yeah. as a rap fan, they're like the group that people have always, like people who aren't hardcore rap fans have always just asked me what I thought of them. And I was always, to me, it was a little bit too out there that I never got super into it. But I understand for a lot of people, it was probably like their main yeah. entry point into rap because it was so different. How old are you? 35. You have a dick, don't you? At least one, yeah. Yeah, you're six. So basically, like, they're like rap for fucking teenage girls, you know? Like, the whole thing that they go for is to appeal and really, like, vibe with, like, young people. I haven't listened to anything that Diane Wood has made since Donkey Mug, the album that they worked on when I was in the mix. So what um, age were you when you got interested in them? Oh, uh, like 19? 19, okay. So you weren't that young. Yeah. Well, yeah. But that's like when they came out-ish. Were you yeah. already like, did you already have a big ass f f tattoo on your forehead? <laughs> no. No, that that came afterwards? That was a, re a result of that? No, I had tattoos, dude. I had tattoos. I was getting the... <laughs> I think I had this one already before they Oh, came okay. So how old are you now? I'm 25. Okay. Um, so you become a Diane Ward fan, and then how how do you actually start 
communicating with the band? Mm, Yolandi hit me up on Instagram. I put all this shit in my like receipt song that I put out on YouTube, The Question. Basically, if you ask these fucking strange cunts, they'll tell you that I just like slid into Ninja's DMs and started like sending him booby pics. But that isn't the case. Um, and you shouldn't tell fucking lies, kids. And this is why. Uh, so Yolandi, it was before DMs existed and she like messaged me and I remember being like, what the fuck? Like, she's like a pop culture queen. Why is she messaging my dumb ass fucking from Brisbane, Australia? You know, like I had never met a celebrity before. I would not hung out with any like, even like relevant artists in the Australian music scene or anything like that. It was like a different world and it didn't make any sense. And at this point in my life, I'm smoking like 10 bongs a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner, you know? So I was just like, but. So you're a high as fuck, like yeah. 19 or 20 year old girl getting messaged by a person that you consider to be like ridiculously famous and influential. Fucking hell yeah, dude. Like I was like, to put it in, fuck, I hate saying their stage names, but I'll do it just for like the point of this interview. Ninja was like, you're not, like, a psycho fan. You're, like, a cool fan. I guess that was, like, his way of, like, stroking my ego and making me feel, like, fucked up, dude. So they asked for my fucking email. Yolandi's like, we must talk. We must talk. Like, you're, like, so cool. And, like, within the fucking first email that she sends me, she's like, mm, Ninja showed me your bloggy. Like, it's so cool when I'm in Australia next. I want to smoke with you. It's going to be fucking great. I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, porn star wants to come to Australia and smoke with me? Like, shit. Like, that's, that's warped. And, like, dude, he jumps on my fucking inbox like a rat off a fucking rope. And he's like, ooh, my little sister, she, like, sent you some mail. Like, calling her his little sister and shit. Like, just from the get-go, it was real fucking obscure, real abstract. And I'm just like, play it cool. Like, just just play it cool, kid, kind of thing. Like, don't, what, what the fuck's going on? Um, but did, you, did you, at any point dur during this early courting stage, did you assume that you were being inquired about as a sex object here they were just saying that i was like they need me in their click mm, okay so just more you know? like you you were and looking at it accessory they were like oh she's like a witch like or oh, what are you into they were on tour at the time and he was like fucking emailing me like five or six times a day like from day one it, i got uh -huh. i looked into it and it's called love bombing and I say Google that shit because it's, I felt like I was like knocked off my feet from like start to fucking finish. Like I never got a chance to like get perspective. All my friends around me were like young and dumb and fans as well. So everyone was just like, whoa, no one. I didn't have any adults or anything in my life that were like, let's like take a step back and let's like have a talk about this. Like what's going on? Everyone was just like, so, I don't know, like, everyone's so quick to fucking judge, like, ooh, the red flags, like, fuck that, but think about, like, your favorite fucking band, you know, like, and imagine, like, that just had a fucking obscurity, like, they climb out of a fucking poster on your wall, and they're like, hey, Adam, hey, 20-year-old Adam, I want to talk to you, and you're just like, like, it was like that. And it was fucking intense. And I never got a fucking second. Like, it was just an obsession for him. No, I mean, when I was like 19 or 20, I was still getting catfished by girls on the internet that weren't even pretending to be famous people. So I could completely understand what you were going through. Yeah. 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 And it was like, I, I've been trying not to read fucking comments and shit on the internet, you know, but I see like how their fans are trying to justify and kind of like put off what I've come forward and spoken about as just like horse shit. And that's fine. Like I can imagine it's a shock and it's something that's hard for people that have really like resonated and connected with Diane Wood, but it's all a front. Um, but like the main thing that people are saying is just, 
oh, you you should have like come out about this sooner. It's like I it took me fucking years to even come to fucking terms with like what happened. I was love bombed and fucking I feel like I was brainwashed. And that's pretty embarrassing to say. But yeah. So I, I think honestly like one one of the problems that it's kind of going on with this situation and sort of the lack of uh, attention that it's getting the media and everything is that it feels like it's kind of overwhelming because in the music video that you put out, there was such a, a absurd number of texts, which, you know, to my opinion, that makes it probably more obvious that you're telling the truth because you're putting it all out there. Super obvious in your face. Look at how fucking weird this co- conversation was. Um, but then I feel also for some people, it's kind of like overwhelming. Like it's, it's hard for them to really wrap their head around exactly what you're saying transpired um yeah. so if you were to try to want to talk about overwhelming what's overwhelming is the fact that i never intended to release one receipt that was never my fucking intention i made a song to address how i fucking lived my life and it was for my following like before this shit happened i think i had like maybe like 73k on my instagram like lots of people were like into my music but it was a small thing and me addressing something that was so pivotal and like head fucking for me five years ago and finally being like and then there's that okay now you really do know about Johnny, you know like the kind of shit that shaped me like that's the truth Instead of me being able to just fucking do that and then move forward, they decided to make two posts about me on Yolandi's Instagram telling fucking vicious wild lies and completely deflecting and trying to crush and suppress and control their narrative because that's what they do. Whenever someone comes out and says, yo, these people are actually pretty fraud and they do fucked shit, they're always like, let me tell you a story about so-and-so. And that's what they do. It's the pattern. And because they did that, I was just like, they also sent me a cease and desist from Reed Smith, like one of the biggest fucking law firms in the world. Like the fucking lawyer that was signed off on this cease and desist, I Googled his name and he represents like Meek Mill. He represents Rihanna, you know? Like they wow. came through. The song had been out for three days and had maybe 2,000 streams. So, I'm going to come through and I, I got legal advice. Like, it spun me out for about two days. I was, like, got in touch with some lawyers and they were just like, oh, fuck, take the song down because Australia's got backwards defamation laws that actually favour the defamed and the celebrity. Right. And it's not, we don't have a constitution in Australia. We don't have freedom of speech. So, it's a bit different. And they were like, take the song down. My friends were like, take the fucking song down, Johnny. You got what you wanted. Like, you got to say what happened. You got to express yourself. And I'm just like, if I take the fucking song down, then this these two-part clout chase the posts on Yolanda's Instagram, like the shit she just fucking garbled about me, nah. Come yeah, if, if, if you take it down, that's pretty much... In a lot of people's eyes, if you take it down, that's going to make you look like you're lying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care about money. That's, they don't know me. You know, they knew a 20 year old kid. They don't know what I'm about, what my convictions are. And honestly, honor, integrity, dignity, that's that shit. So I came through with some receipts. I got a very small selection of receipts and I fucking. I'm a belligerent little cunt, and I made a fucking visual for the song and put it on YouTube. Okay, so I guess this is what I'm trying to get at is, like, if you were to try to, like, summarize the worst offenses out, like, removed from the overall narrative of what your time spent in their presence was, what would you summarize that as? And then we could get a little bit more into, like, the whole how this all happened. Dude, like, it was... (laughs) I think anyone who's come into contact with them and can relate with what I was talking about, and there's a few, they'll all understand that it's not never just like one thing. It's a fucking psychological fucking disaster, and it's drawn out over a long period of time. You know, there's no like one specific thing that made me go, these people are fucking evil. 
it was me looking back as an adult at the situation and being like, wow, that really fucking happened. And this is how a fucking grown ass man in his 40s conducted himself around that situation. You know what I mean? Like mm. I made sure that I was very blunt and to the point about what went down when I was in Africa for fucking eight days. And the reason I wanted to be so blunt is I didn't want people in the media and shit to keep on like poking details out of me. I'm just like, this happened. It was fucked up. It was incredibly traumatic. It shook me for a long time. And, um, and then what transpired after that just shows me that there was no misunderstanding. <laughs> it, it was what it was, you know, like, it's rough. It's like, and it makes me feel uncomfortable, like having it aired so fucking publicly. Like I came out and I fucking said my piece, but then to have them deal with it instead of just being like, ignore her or oh, fuck, we have a misunderstanding. Would you like to have a conversation? Instead, it's just like exactly what I said in my song. Go ahead and tell your story and deflect how you always do. About the weird vegan fan that was so in love with you. He did exactly that, you know? That was exactly what I knew this cunt would do. He lied about all these fucking random details that can easily be debunked. It's kind of sad kind of fucked up uh, okay there's so, a reason why i made a song and i didn't fucking just like do some like instagram shade post or like go to the media about it you know what i mean or like people are like why didn't you just go to the police i'm like can't they live in south africa mm. you fucking, like think about that for a second um but there's a strange power in music and art to actually like speak and connect with a listener and tell a story, tell my story, talk about an experience that went down. And unlike, cause there's been others. I think of like this farmer in South Africa that spoke about how like ninja fucking crushed these boys and like stole all their fucking style and shit. And he spoke about it in an article because one of the kids was talking about how he was mistreated by Diane Wood, and I guess that's Ninja. And they just fucking squashed that shit so fast, you know? He was just like, nah. And at the end of the day, the guy only wrote down some statements in an article, and there was no way for people to, like, see, like, the honesty in his face, who his voice. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think people are going to be that moved by somebody saying that they basically like stole somebody's style of dress, even though I that, that's definitely something to be discussed. But I feel like, you know, the accusations you're coming with are a lot more uh, hardcore. People are more likely to be moved by them. Yeah, like I said, this isn't a me too. This is fucking beef. I fucking sat on this for a long time. I was preparing myself to finally kill the fucking fear that I had because it's actually been the opposite to what I had expected. When I uploaded the fucking shit, the line to like all the different streaming platforms, I was so fucking anxious because I'm like, so this is it, Johnny. You're finally going to be 100% fucking honest and true and everyone's going to turn around and spit in your face. You're going to lose thousands of followers. And that's just going to be that. But you know, bitch, it's better to be fucking hated for the fucking truth than, like, loved for holding back and being inauthentic. And I thought about 50-year-old me. I thought about sitting back and knowing that I let fucking horrid shit go down and be perpetrated against me, but I fucking bit my tongue. That shit being 50, looking back and knowing that I was an inactive participant in my life, as opposed to me, what I've just done right now, I decided to be active, I decided to fucking kill that fear and just fucking speak. I'll be 50 years old and I won't have any regrets, you know? Like, that, that's a big deal. That's, that's what's important to me. For sure. So, how did you actually, well, how would you characterize the relationship that they were interested in having with you? Would you say that they mostly wanted to, to well, just how would you describe that? 
Uh, a game. A game. <laughs> a game. Looking back, yeah. in the moment, like for the months that he spent fucking buttering me up and telling me that he loved me and fucking telling me how special I am, that I'm a real witch and I've summoned him into my life. And now what am I going to, you know, we're talking, like, you have, maybe you've read The Art of Seduction. Um, it's a book by Robert Greene and it really breaks down the levels of manipulation people can go through when it comes to seducing a person. And part of that can be adding mysticism, spirituality, the occult, all of that kind of like intrinsic in that kind of shit. But he infused that into his production for me. Like he brags about the fact like studied my Tumblr for months before hitting me up. Like this motherfucker was like watching me. And I've got that shit like I cut through my sheets, you know, like I said. I wasn't ever planning to fucking out these people on like a fucking evidence based thing. I just wanted to have my piece, move on, draw a line and be like, I don't fuck with these people. I don't fuck with these people. Don't bring them up to me because this is why. But instead I was my hand was forced, I feel. But like he was playing a fucking game and I wasn't the first witch that he shipped in, you know? Like a lot of people are coming with shit now and I'm hearing some like I just was the ahead I feel I was just the one person with the balls to fucking call their shit out you know so and his like, game like this this game that you're describing would you say that basically his shtick is that he like would contact a girl online and then sort of like convince her that like like apparently it's not good enough for him to just be like, yo, I'm trying to fuck, or like, yo, I like you, or whatever, that his game is that he sort of, like, convinces girls that he wants them to, or that he thinks they're basically they're a witch, or that they have powers, or whatever, and that's how he kind of draws them in. Is that accurate? So that's what I thought up until maybe, how long's my song been out? Up until about a month ago. That's what I thought. Like, I am into the occult. I have been since before you hit me up. I continue to be. It's, like, my main, like, point of study. But... I realized, like, the whole point of, like, I, I thought that this cunt had, like, cursed me. I thought he was, like, some mad fucking practitioner because that's what he told me. He was, like, oh, he told me he was, like, in his final carnation and, like, he was, like, into some deep, heavy shit, like, chaos magic and he wanted me to, like, vibe with him. And what I realize now is cunt was full of shit. Um, he just used that as a way to really get into my personal head. But he had been pursuing, like, magic in a way to inspire his art. The guy's a storyteller. Ninja's not real. He uses things, he uses people and objects to inspire his fucking creative output. You know, everything's, like, stolen. Including wanting to hang out with, like, a fresh little Aussie witch. You know? So you, you, one thing that I thought was interesting is that you said that, uh, he just wanted you because he, because you looked like the other one, the, the, the girl in the group. Yeah. So if the walls could fucking talk, like, that's a good point to touch on. You know how I'm like, you said you fucking picked me cause I looked like your daughter 16, you're disgusting, pedophile cunt. So in Australia, when people say the kind of shit that he would say to me in real life on the phone few messages here and there that's the kind of shit we say in australia it's like ooh, pedo that's fucking gross but on that topic it's a great topic because let's like really look at the fucking dichotomy you've got yolandi bissa a woman in her 30s who is portrayed as this lolita aesthetic the infantization of yolandi the baby voice then let's look at some of the art that they put forward. Something like Cookie Thumper. The storyline in the visuals for that is literally a schoolgirl who is an orphan. And what she does is she strips for her drug dealer. And that's the visuals that they decided to put forward for Cookie Thumper. Then even just something like Enter the Ninja, you know, Yolandi's in a fucking school uniform. You know, this is like life imitating art. 
and like that's just how they choose to put forward their aesthetic you know i don't think i'm reading too much into this but having said that like it's unfortunate i have received a lot of people reaching out to me about their own experiences and their own like shit that they've heard about ninja and it's pretty sad and it's not my place to like talk about any of this i can only talk about my own experience and how i feel about it but yeah fucking this you know you're gonna play this like weird fucking like i'm your dad kind of shit like trying to like play a game you know and like he did fucking say like isn't it funny Sean? you be like look like 16 it's kind of weird huh like just shit like that all the time in person on skype like So he would acknowledge how weird this relationship that he was pursuing with you was, is what you're saying? I'm assuming it's like a kink or something, you know? Like I said, when people like say that weird shit, we just say like, yo, pedo, the fuck. Right, but, but do you, you don't think that he was technically, you were 19 at the time, so he wasn't technically breaking any laws or anything? It's about like the fetish behind it. It's about the fucking, like I said, it's about the way that they, like, project the shit in the art. Underage female. Like, I just, like, makes me feel gross. My own okay. opinion. It's like, so, ew. So, did it, did it often um, extend into, like, physical abuse? Or, like, was there a moment where that line was crossed? Well, I spoke about that. In, like I made a statement on my song, you know. Right, but I was just like interested in exactly uh, what went on in that and how that changed your mind. I was very graphic. What do you mean? How what changed my mind? <laughs> no, I just mean like was that was that this moment where you sort of like crossed a line and you were like, oh, okay, this is scary. This is bad. This is a totally different level of bad than I might have been thinking before. Yeah, yeah, it scared the fuck out of me. It was like traumatic. What was something that like I thought I was with one person and then that shit went down and I was just like I felt like something that was being hunted <laughs> being haunted that's how you felt afterwards hunted. oh hunted you know like I was just like scared the fuck out of me and I just like what really fucked me up like the way that he decided to fucking handle that shit you know in this weird fucking baby voice. Oh, Johnny, what happened? I'm just like, nothing happened, bro. Fuck. Okay. That's how you want to run this? Like, so, but you're saying that he raped you and then acted as if he didn't really understand what happened afterwards or why you would be upset. Is that accurate? Yeah. So it's like, I tell my like close friends, like what happened or like, I see like feminists, like talking about it online and they all are using this word to like describe what happened to me. And it's kind of been like melting my fucking brain the last couple of weeks. Like you use like the word rape. And I just think of like some poor bitch, like in a dark alley being like stalked by a stranger. Do you know what I mean? Like the word, like it's got like this, it just, I don't want to take away from girls that have gone through like fucking terrifying, like shit on a different level. Do you know? Everyone right, but like, I mean, it comes in a lot of different forms. Do, do you do you feel like it was different in your situation because you like pursued a relationship to an extent or a friendship, and then that the things went out of hand? Because I'm pretty sure that still completely qualifies yeah. as rape. But I mean, I, I guess I understand how you. I, I come from like a real rough upbringing. Like bad shit happens to people all the fucking time, you know. So it's just like hearing because I never like processed it in that way, you know. And then, like, hearing, like, I've, I've told people what's happened, and that's, like, the feedback that I've gotten, and that's the word that keeps on being used, and I'm just, like, kind of taken aback by it, you know? Like, I guess, yeah, he strangled the fuck out of me and fucked me like a fucking possessed demon until he came. <laughs> and I guess, like strangling is assault we were having sex like i don't fucking know I just yeah like i said it melts my brain a bit even just like hearing that word i don't kind of like 
like in my head i'm like i didn't get raped do you know what i mean mm, okay i got you yeah and i mean it from Sorry. your perspective it's like you just well I, I thought it was really interesting what you said when you said this is this isn't a me too this is a diss mm. like in your head this is more of happens to be real i'm not just some rapper like plucking at tiny little things like you got an ugly nose and like you're probably maybe a homosexual you know it's not that kind of diss it's like personal it's like i'm gonna unpack all the horrible shit you did to me okay mm. and what happened was they challenged me on it being like mm, yolandi's like posting like oh and johnny says that me and ninja did a weird satanic ritual on her she's crazy and i'm just like no you're gonna like play it like that and and like completely change the narrative in that case i'm just gonna put it all out there and explain to everyone what the fuck happened when i was in africa I know, and it's it's weird too, because if if so, if some girl said about me like, "Oh, Adam did a satanic ritual with me," I, I assume everybody would be like, "Wow, that doesn't sound right." But in their case, I mean, them doing rituals or being to witchcraft and stuff is not so outlandish, right? Nah, bro, they're Buddhist vegetarians. What are you fucking talking about? So that you take issue with them representing themselves as Buddhist vegetarians? That's that's something for you. Dude. They were fucking obsessed with magic, you know, like to the point where they're like fabricating how much they're into magic to someone like me, a 20 year old. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. they were like this fucking album that he was writing songs for me on was called Donkey Mug. It means dark force in Afrikaans. You know, they were trying to get fucking magic practitioners like voices and shit on it. You know, they tried to like get other people's shit on it. They tried to get my shit on it. Like, they were, they're trying to inspire their life so they can make art because Ninja and Yolandi aren't real. They're characters. And that's what everyone doesn't fucking get, you know? And it's like, like I said, it's brainwashing to be involved with it for the level that I was involved with it. They are just, I, I feel like they lack any kind of, like emotional intelligence or something it, it's fucking trash and yeah well, I, well i'm interested in what you said because the thing the the line that you drew in the sand oh. between like the me too thing and the diss on thing is that you know on one you're sort of being presented as the aggressor and on one you're sort of being presented as the victim and obviously you could be both at the same time but it's interesting to me that you you seem like you feel so much more comfortable being the person who's accusing and and you know exposing what happened etc and you just don't like to think of yourself as somebody who is being taken advantage of even though you seem to be coming to coming to grips with the fact that that might be what have happened yeah yeah i just yeah i don't like the idea of being a victim i don't like that it, I'm, it makes me feel uncomfortable it makes me get shaky and stammer and i'm not usually like that you know just like talking about it with you right now i haven't spoken to like a stranger, especially a stranger with a fucking microphone recording me talk, you know? So it's like a big thing to like talk about it with you right now. I'm just like, yeah, it's hard no, to talk to my friends about. And now it's kind of like just out there, yeah. What is your opinion of the way that the media has handled it? Because that's that was a thing that was concerning me at first was that you you sent me like a YouTube link to a dude talking about it and you sent me a link to your music video and stuff. But I was, you know, kind of interested that the, there were some fan sites talking about it, but it didn't seem like the, the real music media or outside media had really uh, pounced on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... It's interesting. I just want to say shout out to the Australian music media because the only two publications that fucking wrote about it, they posted links to my revenge porn. Very good. Very good. We got to talk about that for sure. Yeah. Australian fucking publication like unpacked it and had a chat, you know, like I, I heard that perhaps a reason that certain media outlets haven't, like, jumped on the story, as you put it, because I didn't, like, hire a fucking publicist for some shit. And apparently, like, that's a part of, like, articles getting written about stuff. I'm yeah, not, I, I mean, like, there's a weird thing going that happens, too, where it's kind of like, 
okay, if the New York Times wrote about it, then everybody would feel comfortable writing about it. But it's like they're, everybody's waiting for the first person to write about it because then they don't necessarily get held accountable if any of the details end up being shaky or whatever. You know, the, everybody, nobody wants to be the first one. Well, everybody really does want to be the first one, but it's kind of scary to be the first one. Like, I wasn't the only person to have their fucking mind melted by Diane Wood. I love pronouncing it wrong. I just get a kick out of it. Um, but... I was the first cunt to actually, like, speak up and be like, attention, we're going to talk about this, you know what I mean? So, even though a lot of people have, like, been through it, I'm the first person to be like, yo, I went through this, and it's, it's just the same thing. It takes, like, one person to, like, really, like, break something for other people to, like, feel like they can go there, and I think it's the same in the media, plus... Mm. The media in general in its entirety is generally pretty, like, not a fan. That's what, yeah. Like, anyway. I mean, th- like, but, okay, I was- let's talk about the revenge porn. Yeah, yeah, okay. So okay, they basically they were in possession of of naked photos of you, I guess, or whatever. I haven't actually seen what they posted, but um, they were so upset with what you were saying about them that they actually posted whatever they had of you. Um, and that some blogs linked to it. So they made a website. They made a very special website <laughs> to host the fucking images and videos on, and they curated it so I seemed as satanic and prostitute like as possible. So I've already spoken about this like briefly on my fucking Instagram story, but which is important. If anybody wants to understand this, they should definitely watch the Instagram story that is uploaded to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's up there, yeah. So basically, I am not signed. <laughs> I'm, I'm fully like, music's all I fucking do. You know, everything is completely self-funded. So it's like, how am I going to get that money? You know, for boys, generally, rappers, they're going to get the fuck out on the street and they're going to sell some dope and then they're going to take that money and they're going to invest it into some studio time. And that's just how it is a lot of the time. For me, I'm just mm-hmm. like, so I do like performance art, like, I'm into the occult, like, ritual performance art. Someone like Marina Abramovich is, like, a massive inspiration to me. And I was like, okay, so on Snapchat, I see, like, all these beautiful girls getting into, like, this kind of, like, online thought game. And they make people, like, subscribe to their Snapchat. So I'm just like, I'm a musician. So if I do that, it can only be good, right? Like, let's, like, do performance art and, like, film kind of, like, rituals and people can join and, like, see some titty, see some art. Also, like, watch, like, art, kind of, like, music video-style shit. I think I'm a fucking genius. And with those subscriptions, with all, like, the cash that I stacked over, like, I started it on the 28th of December and it's still running right now. And basically, I was able to self-fund my entire project, The Line, with this fucking Snapchat. I mean, you definitely don't have to worry about feeling bad about having a private snap or anything. My girlfriend's got one. Every freaking girl in L.A. I know has got one. I mean, I know it might be a little bit newer in Australia, but it's it's a mainstreamified thing out here. Well, apparently it's like, oh, she's a satanic prostitute, so don't trust her. Don't trust the fucking word that she's saying. I don't know if they... I don't know if, like, they're old, they're from South Africa, they're, like, out-of-touch celebrities or something. They're not getting any advice, is all I can tell you, because when they decided to come through like that, it was just kind of... Everyone just kind of, like, stopped for a second. It was a bit shocking to see. You know, I have a 13-year-old sister, and that damage can't be undone, you know, she's seen that shit, that's that, you know, like, I said it was beef for life for, like, everything that they did to me in the past, everything he did to me in the past, now, like, coming into 2019, how they tried to censor me, how they had lawyers send cease and desist, how they've had lawyers intimidate iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, and they had my entire project ripped from platforms. I had to like take all my music and re-upload with a new aggregator 
they're fully just trying to censor me. I've had posts on Instagram just magically disappearing, not even receiving that pop up notification that you usually get from Instagram being like, here's a blurred out picture, here's the timestamp, like you broke a community guideline. I'm not even getting that. Like I'm talking about the censorship. And I've got like, I remember very clearly this post where I'm like, okay, so my music's getting pulled from all these servers. I decided not to remove the song. And I said, come to Australia, cunt. Let's go to court. You want to talk? You want to put me through this? Like, let's go. I'm not afraid. You know, there's an incredible power and truth. And they took that decision from me and they had their lawyers intimidate fucking streaming services. And my music got pulled. So I spoke about that publicly to my following. It had like over 10,000 fucking likes, over a thousand comments. People are like, what the fuck? And this post just magically fucking disappeared. What's that about? You know, like this is. Yeah, I mean, that's insane to me because then it's like Instagram's basically complicit in silencing you. And I mean, that it doesn't make any sense to me that they could possibly uh, get away with that. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of power in a blue fucking dick. You know, what's interesting is the fact that fucking Yolandi goes in on the attack after I get a cease and desist that very same day and makes two posts, Clout Chaser Part 1, Clout Chaser Part 2. Oof. And I went to make a response within the hour of that being posted, within an hour of that being posted, and my account had been restricted and I could no longer fucking post on my Instagram. That's never happened before. And it was restricted for seven days. I'm not trying to like, my conspiracy is like, I see the motherfucker who is representing them as a lawyer, see the kind of artist that he represents. It's my personal opinion that I wouldn't be surprised someone like this guy has like mad fucking contacts at Instagram and could just be like, just um, cut that account. Definitely. He you know? definitely, anyone who's like a big time lawyer, listen, every yeah. lawyer I know in Hollywood or in the entertainment industry is the most well-connected person I know. Like they are, they, they know everybody. Yo, he's bragged about his fucking lawyers to me back in 2013. Apparently his management in LA are like the mafia, you know, like. <laughs> If, who brags to a 20 year old about that shit i don't know like i should probably watch out too um yeah, yeah you should watch out like what but yeah that's I've, all right and i've been getting like a lot of messages being like oh, you shouldn't have fucking said anything dude this shit runs so much deeper than just like your experience like fuck i don't know i need m&m on the fucking line i think we have something in common yeah, I thought that was pretty funny that you wore the Eminem shirt in uh, the music video, which I didn't get immediately, and then I was reading more stuff about it, and then I kind of got the reference. Yeah, plus Yolandi tried to convince me to give her that shirt once, and I was like, well, That's what we really need, is we need Eminem to reach out and get on your side. Uh, who knows what's going on right now? Oh, shit, there's a possibility. He might be on Shady Records by the end of the month. Yo, I've been like, I was talking about like favorite rappers, like obviously like Eminem forever. I just like really like respect the fucking grind of someone that comes from a background like that. It's definitely like a level from my background. So that's sick. Yo, I, I did want to touch on this too. Is like, so, okay, from a legal perspective, have you spoken to the police? Have you spoken to lawyers? Like, what do you plan on making this a legal situation for them? I know they're in Africa and you're in Australia, so. Yo, yo, yo. So I don't fuck with pigs. And I never intended to fuck with any pig. But they brought their hotshot fucking lawyer. And they involved mm. that. They just shut me the fuck down. So I was forced. Again, I was forced to make it a bigger deal. And fucking I've gone to the police. I have lawyers looking after me. You know, they want to play that game. I can play that game too. So like I said already, it's really tough because they're in fucking South Africa. But I would love them to come to Australia after posting my revenge porn to millions of people on their YouTube platform, on their Facebook platform, on their Instagram platform, three fucking videos, all encouraging everyone to check out the link below. So come to Australia, cunts, because you broke the fucking law. Um, At the end of February, we actually had a legislation change on, on revenge porn specifically. It's very interesting because a woman who looked after to me when I was like fucking basically homeless. I was like sleeping on a couch at the end of 2015. 
she was the main driving force behind changing this legislation in Australia. It's this weird synchronicity. And um, she's more than happy to exercise a fucking attempt at putting these laws into effect. Mm. And like I said, I didn't want to bring pigs into this, but it's like my fucking 13-year-old sister saw that shit. You know, no one had permission to distribute any fucking photos of me publicly. Anyone that was on my Snapchat, they all fucking... When you sign up to my Snap, I, like, give you the rundown of, like, what the fuck it's about. Like, yo, send this much money to my PayPal, let's go. But under no circumstances, there should be any fucking screenshotting, any recording. Like, I don't give you permission to do that. Right. But I need to say that shit because the laws that cover revenge porn in Australia now, you don't even need to, like, tell people, oh, you can't share that. It's just, it goes without saying. So... Right. And I mean, listen, like my girlfriend, like people will forever screenshot or record the stuff that she does in her private Snapchat and they'll put it on Reddit or put it or whatever. And it's one thing because they're just random fucking dudes. And, you know, obviously she's not going to be able to do anything about it besides getting it removed. But the difference with this is that they have millions of followers. They have huge audiences like that. Let's that is like a completely different. Most of their audience are children. Like, like mm. I'd love to see their social blade, you know? I can like tap on my fucking Instagram and I can look up like what my main like age demographic is and like it's ki- it's music for fucking kids. It's like dummy fucking pop kind of like napped. Like they've got like psycho freak fans and then like a lot of people are just young kids and they're posting that shit. They're posting fucking links to revenge porn. Like I don't know, dude. I don't know. Like. You like you're shook right now. You're just like. <laughs> no, sorry. I was I was just distracted by my girlfriend texting me. But uh, no, I I totally. I mean, yeah, it's just crazy. I I wonder if this. Do you think it? What's your hunch? Do you think that this will probably end up in a courtroom by the by the time you die? Like I said, do it. You know, I'm not afraid by a fancy fucking lawyer. I'm not, like, I'm happy to go there, you know. I didn't fucking make my trap without thinking about, like, what could possibly transpire, you know. Let Definitely. It, you know, but at the same time, it's like, that'd be pretty dumb. You know, I wasn't fucking around. I don't tell lies. I wouldn't fucking step up like this and fucking go there, you know. That's, that's not the shit that I'm about. I hear you. Okay, so is there anything else we need to cover in terms of the uh, the recent accusation and all that kind of stuff? Is there anything else that stands out that I'm missing? Just like scraping my brain. Um, are there any more questions that you can think of? Anything? No, I mean, it? I think we've done a pretty good job fleshing it out. I mean, I, that's really what I wanted to do is just sort of uh, summarize everything for the people out there who might be a little bit lost and confused on this. Obviously, there's a big, big appetite for people who want to know about this. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like, you check out something like there's this guy, Edwin, on fucking YouTube. He's like the one person that's like really like gotten into shit and like read through it. But like, let me just think for a moment. No, definitely shout out to Edwin because he was the first person whose video I watched about the whole thing. And then when I, uh, w- he was tweeting about it and he actually tagged me and was like, yo, dude, you make fucking rap related videos. You should be covering this. And I was like, fuck, he's right. I'm being a pussy by not covering this. I, I got to get on it. It's just, yeah, it's fucking spastic shit. It's like, like I said, I just keep on feeling like my hand keeps on getting forced. Like, I tried to just express myself artistically, make my fucking song, and then finally be like, Whew, okay, now I can move on with my life. And whenever some cunt messages me being like, oh, you should make a song with Diet Wood or some shit like that, I can just be like, mm, publicly, and just be like, no, no, that isn't going to happen, you know? Because, like, because I was, like, just shut down fully. I went like fully insular when shit went down in 2013, 2014, 15. I went like, just like I closed up and I didn't speak and I didn't express myself. And that was like a psychological thing in itself and it fucked with my art, you know? And Mm. it took a long fucking time to really like unpack what went down. And 
as a 20 year old, 21 year old, like emotionally, I wasn't very intelligent. Um, and I struggled with like understanding the people around me and I get a little bit older and then you start to like look back and like realize like what the fuck's going down and like the power play and shit like that. And you're just like, as I got older, I understood more and more clearly like what the fuck went down, you know? And yeah, it's just like about like drawing a fucking line for me. And I did that, but what I'm trying to say is my hand was forced to come through with fucking receipts and like make this into a bigger deal. They made it into a bigger deal by telling fucking fibs and trying to come at me real hard. Cause they were like, they use excessive force, something like the art of war. It tells you like, if you're fighting the enemy, don't let them think that they're fighting to the death because they will use excessive force. They will fight harder and stronger than they would if they see a fucking rat hole to escape down. And I thought I gave them like an escape in a sense, like just like ignore me, know how I fucking have like outed you publicly and fuck ya, or reach out and we can talk about this shit and I'll probably tell you to get fucked. But you know what I mean? Like mm. the, their escape was to just be like, that's embarrassing. But instead, I guess that wasn't an option for them because they shit their pants. I think it's my opinion. It's my personal opinion that Ninja was like, well, we can't have anyone else thinking that they can pull a Johnny. Let's make a fucking example of this bitch real quick, you know? Mm. And they came back with excessive force, you know? Cease and desist from Rihanna's lawyer. Fucking two posts on Instagram, clout chaser. Now hopefully she goes back under the fucking rock from whence she came. And unfortunately, they don't know me. They don't know what I'm fucking about. They don't know that that kind of shit doesn't... I'm not... I, it's got no power over me. They and don't know yeah. that you, you're the type to just fuck around and go on No Jumper and talk about it. <laughs> I don't know what they think, dude. Like, I think that they think that I'm as, as obsessed with money as they are. You know? Like, mm. I don't give a fuck. But, yeah, like I said, my hand's been forced to stand up for myself. Because at the end of the day, you try and fuck with my fucking integrity. You try and fuck with my honor. Like, I'll fight to the fucking death, you know? And I don't have to use any fucking slippery tactics. I don't have to tell fibs, you know? That's bad fucking power and truth. Yeah. For sure. Um, okay, so as, as far as... Moving on from that. As far as your actual music career, what is coming up next? And to the people out there that are interested in the story but maybe haven't fully, like, immersed themselves in your music as I have as a diehard fan that I am now, um, what would you suggest? Fuck off. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I do, I do like that one fucking video a lot, though. I, I, I gotta, I've been playing that on stream and shit. The elves, you're like, yeah, gelps. Sick. <laughs> Nah, girls are cool. Are you talking about Lion Look? What'd you say? I said, are you talking about Lion Look? You want me to look? I could tell you which one it is right now. The song's called Lion Look, and I have, like, prosthetic elf ears on. Is that what you mean? Yeah, you're dressed super crazy in that one. I was actually very excited about the wardrobe in that. Oh, thanks. Self-styled forever. Nah, so that's great. Like, that's the kind of shit that I will keep on pursuing. It's really interesting blending, like, beautiful, like, melodic trap levels, but using my Australian accent and just, like, going with it. Like, I love someone like Young Thug, like, to get into, like, the mood. Like, I'll have, like, a couple of beers and, like, just, like, blast Thugger super loud and be, like, okay, experimental you know and just like getting in and like experimenting with different like hooks and kind of i always like try and work out the hook first and then come through with like writing verses it's just it's different for australia like our scene is like a little bit different to america it's a lot different you know no I, we, we notice because we've been dealing with iggy for the past few years we notice that there's something going on with the australian women who iggy Oh, Iggy Azalea, like blonde, blonde girl. She, that for most Americans, that's probably the only Australian they could name. Nah, nah. In my opinion, Iggy Azalea is an American rapper. She's not an Australian rapper. She uses an American voice. She's an American rapper. Like that. That's it. Fair enough. She does. 
does American rap. She may be an Australian, but she performs American rap. I'll admit that when I was in Australia, I was just I was just there for two weeks, and I kept making jokes about Iggy to everybody, and everybody kept being like really surprised that I would mention her. Like it it, it wasn't as obvious of a reference as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Look, she does her thing, but like, yeah, just just my opinion. She's an American rapper because she has a, an American accent that she uses when she raps. I don't do that. Um, now. Like I said, I fuck with like the melodic trap thing and there's going to be more of that. I think it's really fun. I think people enjoy it. It's easy listening. But also like I love all that like young type shit. Like someone like Zilakami, fucking Fresh Lord, you know? Like I He's love amazing, that. yeah. I love getting on a fucking track and streaming too. Like I'm working with someone like King Yosef is my producer and he's fucking great, you know? Like real cool industrial type beats. It's, if you it's, and Zilakami did a song, that would be mind blowing. Yo, yeah, he started following me the other day, so like, I might just. He's he's weird well, enough that hard. he might be well, down. Like, I, I, I think he would see your stuff and maybe understand the value. Whereas, obviously, some rappers would be very confused. Yeah, I'm I'm a tough one. I'm quite like um, disagreeable, and. I like I get on here. I'm quite like argumentative and fucking. Mm, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. Like it's only gonna get worse from here. Fuck, you know. <laughs> I've it, I've opened Pandora's box. Like I was quite reserved for a few years and kind of like confused and mixed up. But now I'm like back on track. Like I said, fifty year old Johnny will be very fucking proud. But um, yeah, I love doing like that metal shit. Like that's fun. It's obviously not as popular as something like uh, the melodic trap, like Lion Look or something, but just Wait, like... You're, tr you're trying to get more into the black metal side of things? I've already been doing that, you know? Oh, like okay, that, good. That bunch, something like Maynard. If people are into like black metal, like kind of, it's fucking cool, like industrial. It's almost got like this streak of in Manson style shit at the end. Like it's like a journey. Um... Yeah, there's a couple of tracks at the very end of the line which get a bit heavy. Um, I gotta, I gotta listen to it on my drive home. I gotta get deeper into the the wormhole. Yeah, I got a bunch of like features and shit coming out at the moment. I'm working on new stuff at the moment. I've just been in Hong Kong for two weeks, so I've just been like kind of writing shit and trying to relax a little and just like focus on fun shit. And avoid the internet at all costs, but <laughs> is is it that bad? You feel like it's more hate yeah. than than support right now? Yeah, I got a bunch of fucking support. Like I said, it went like the complete opposite. I feel like stupid as to how like ready I was for the entire world to tell me to go fuck off, you know? Right. And, and I'm being like eye opening, and uh, but at the same time, I'm just trying to not like really like enter into it too much you know like my mom's getting fucking weird messages from like psychos on the internet you know like i'm getting like weird ass like rape threats and death threats but they're so such a small percentage compared to the amount of fucking support mm. you know a few weeks ago i'd reply to any message requests that i received and in the last couple of weeks like it's fucking impossible you know all i can say is like big love to anyone who's like feeling like the fire and can like really like appreciate the energy that I'm coming through with, you know, like shit happens to people, bad shit happens to people and it's fine to like never talk about it. You know, a lot of people go through shit and they will keep that shit to themselves until the day they die. And just like for me to come out and be like, fuck, fuck, fuck. This is what has happened to me. Fuck you. And then fuck again. It's quite like just, ugh, people that have been through shit and they'll never talk about it. They're just like, thank you. That was like therapy to watch. And that's nice. It was like therapy to do. I feel like a weight. I feel like a fucking cancer has been cut out of me and I can finally just move forward, you know? Well, that's got to be a good feeling, the post-cancer removal feeling. Oh, yeah. I'm so hyperbolic. But <laughs> no, that's <laughs> No, I like it for sure. And actually, I'm I'm surprised we just went for an hour because I'm really fucking hungry, and I thought that I wasn't gonna be able to do it. But I'm I'm impressed with us. Nice. 
get you some Uber Eats. You ever going to come to LA so we could do that IRL meeting or is that not in the cards? Yeah, dude, I heard that it's like 50 bands to put hit on a head in LA. Like, I don't know. 50 bands? <laughs> some some um, girl told me that her, that like a girl in the porn world, she told me that one time she was just talking to this agent and that he told her, he's like, oh yeah, I can get anybody killed for you for eight grand. I was like, oh, eight, gra- eight grand is nothing. Yeah, this is some shit. My friend's like, come to New York. It'll be fun. Um, and we got to do a song together and I was just like, I don't know, dude. I don't know what kind of crazy I'm dealing with at the moment, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that's... I, I, no, fuck it. Fuck it. I'll go out in the hellfire. I'll be coming to America this year for sure. You, know? you could use um, my security. I'll, I'll, I'll send a guy to follow you around the whole time. You're a sweetheart. You I know? am. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise on the internet. Yeah, no. Nah, big respect. And like your partner she does her thing and like i said when i fucking ranted for a bit on my instagram like putting me on this like derogatory like ooh, she's a satanic prostitute sex workers can't be trusted i was just like so fucking hit by that i'm just like i have friends that like are sex workers and that doesn't take away from anything about them or like any part of their fucking credibility they're like fucking wonderful people just oh, like yeah. other cunt on the street a fucking accountant you know, a girl that sells the foods, I don't give a fuck. And I felt like there was like this strange like intersection between like the music, like rap scene underground as well, because I'm not well known. And then also like the partner and like the way that she kicks it, you know, I think that's pretty cool. So, yeah. No, definitely. Just- if, if that's the only thing that the outside world gets out of this conversation is that we need to respect the sex workers more then I think that we'll, we did our job here. Yeah, for real. I think it was a pretty shit move. For sure. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you. And uh, we're going to put your social media uh, on the screen so that everybody can follow you and all that shit. I appreciate it. Hey, dude. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Thank you, honestly, just for sharing your story with us. It was an honor. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty, like, hesitant to talk to anyone. So when you reached out, I was kind of like, I put it off for a a little bit. I think we've been like perhaps considering doing it for a, a little bit and then it's just been like mm, I was nervous to talk. Yeah, I mean we're both <laughs> definitely going to be sued by tomorrow, but hey, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they can just like add it to a list of fucking lies. They want to like sue me for defamation. I will just fucking ring it up, you know. You know, yeah. like they managed to get that <laughs> They they took my song and then in the cease and desist they said that Jani has stated that Ninja and Yolandi both performed satanic ritual on her whilst in Africa. And I'm like, really? That's what you got out of that? Like, maybe you're projecting a little bit. Maybe they like, no one brought that up. Why are you talking like that? Like, are you guys Satanists? <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I'm like, I want to know, guys. Like, what kind of Satanism are you into? Is it like the LeVay kind of like Andean objectivist kind of Satanist? Like, see that? That's what I'm into because that's I read the Satanic Bible when I was like 12, and that that was my my entry point into the dark arts. (laughs) It's really an ideology. It's not very occult. It's not very like much about like a practice or anything. And then I'm just like, or is it worship that they're into? You know, like. I'll leave it for the fucking general public to decide, but I'm just telling you. Like I said, Ninja and Yolandi are a character, and there was a moment where they thought that chaos magic was very fucking cool. So. <laughs> oh, man, crazy. All right, hey, yo, I appreciate you uh, talking to me for so long. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a good chat. I could fucking talk the leg off this chair. Do that <laughs> <laughs> all right yo thank you so much and i apologize to our viewers because the video was cutting in and out but uh you know hey the audio was good yeah all the way from australia all good man all good. everybody thank cop the private time. snap <laughs> go to my patreon if you want to get amongst that See, there <laughs> you go. yeah let's fund this next fucking album all right yes patreon. that's what it's all about Thanks for listening. Appreciate Appreciate you. Thank you so much.